Yeah, I'm going to try doing a little power tapping here. Hopefully I won't slip in the collet too much. Uh, but that's a M14 by 1.5 thread pitch. I've got it lined up over the hole there. Uh, it's, it's clamped, but not extremely hard in here, so uh, hopefully it's enough. It, it slipped already, and then I decided, ah, well, let's uh, film it in case it crashes. Um, you know, something I, I noticed here, one reason I film it, uh, the angle I do, you know, one, the camera's at my eye height, um, so I can see the viewfinder and stuff like that, but two, um, it limits the, the depth of field. Okay, because if I come down and shoot more like this, then it's a question of will it focus on the tap and the plate, or will it focus on the background? So by raising it up and coming in at a more of an angle, you get a much smaller depth of field, better chance of getting focused. So that's my that's my brilliant uh, observation for the day. Okay, let's try it again here. It's all gooped up, and this is running at uh, 120. 120 R, uh, RPMs. Hmm. Yeah, and I've got that sucker cranked down. Oh, really friggin' tight. Challenges is figuring out how to get that to grab better. I don't know if maybe I oh maybe I can put that in the ER32 call it. Hold it back just far enough so we can see it slip if it's gonna slip. Um, I kind of like the that lube. It's a little messier, but then again the anchor lube. I think the anchor lube handles uh, higher pressures better. Let's find out. <laughs> now it's the belt slipping. I should tighten down the head. Something you got to worry about with round columns. Oh. I don't think that's going to slip. Something might break. Pressure went away. Hmm. 
Ah, <laughs> oh, that's friggin' awesome. So now I'm torn. Do I tap the rest of them, even though I just don't need to? Well, I got two side by side. I think I'm going to tap the far one over here and call it good. Because then uh, I could put inserts in them if I want and mount them to a hub. And that is just so friggin' awesome. So now if I can tap the uh, brackets like this, I'm just going to be in seventh heaven. Alright, this one goes over to the sink to get washed off. Yes! Oh my god. Okay, this one get clean too. And then I can uh, see about changing taps. Okay, well I reversed the jaws around again. Put them back to where they should be. I went ahead and cut a couple of uh, pieces of uh, scrap aluminum angle I got laying around. And I just need them to get it in there, get it started, and then I'm going to pull the parallels out. I mean, it doesn't have to be just, you know, incredibly accurate. And I don't have to grab it extremely tight either. I just need it to hold well enough so that I can drop down into those two holes with the tap because uh, I won't be able to hold it by hand torquing it. We'll see if it slips or see if it goes. Mm. Please, 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 please. Not hitting on the bottom, I got plenty of but I need to make sure that it's through far enough so that the the whole thing is threaded evenly and I'm past that taper on the end of the tap there. And it is. Oh so sweet. It's stuff like this that makes or breaks whether or not you want to go into production. You know what I mean? This works well enough that I could have a dozen, two dozen of these lined up and say, okay, great, boom, 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 boom. Uh, otherwise, if you've got to hand tap them all, huh, forget that noise. And in production, I would create soft jaws that would register. You know, and then I could put it in there, boom. And I could just do every hole, and then I could move it to the other hole and do every hole, you know. Or I'd have the DRO set. spring pressure the rest of the way, but then coming back, I let the spring pull it up.
That is so effing awesome. I guess before I get too excited, I need to clean these out and make sure the inserts fit uh, as well as I hope. Let's, uh, shout out to Brad. <laughs> I've got such a dull one in there. And that's Brad at Tactical Keychains. I mean, I guess if I'm going to do a shout out, I should do the rest of it, huh? This is his, uh, tuck. It's got a little, uh, X-Acto blade in there. And then I've got a, uh, quick release, magnetic quick release on there. And I bought these titanium rings off of uh, eBay. And if I haven't shown this in another video already, check out this little trick. And, and the other thing I did was uh, I took the tool to help support. And I, this is the right tool. It's not really tight enough. But if you could put a, a rod in there, you know, something to make sure those can't collapse. Um... You can put even more force on them. But, this is working uh, just fine. God, that is just... That is freaking awesome. And I did, I did put a little extra chamfer on there after I got done washing it. I have the uh, single flute chamfer, my big one inch, in the... Uh, in the drill press, and so I just touched up each side. I did that on the uh, the other ones too. So I don't want to bend these tabs or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this back out while I uh, until I get the uh, half thirteens done. All right, let's go do the other one, man. I'm ex I'm getting excited. All right, I got the half thirteen in here. And I'm not expecting any grief from this because two reasons. One, it's the smallest of the taps. Um, and two, these holes are bigger than they normally would be. And I've, I've mentioned that once before in one of the other uh, things. The, the way the insert is designed, uh, it needs a bigger minimum diameter than most. So... That's it. Probably should have made that aluminum just a little bit uh, longer. Yeah, why fight with it? Okay. 